Good afternoon, RHS. I'm Lucinda. And I'm Jose. And this is your Daily Dose for Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023. Cue the intro. Yeah. Freshmen will be attending an assembly t today during 6th hour. James found out about it. This is James Cowell with Impactful's Like Documentary On-Site Report. What exactly is this event for and what is it about? We are hosting an event here at Roosevelt High School in conjunction with the Guidance Center and we're bringing in a um, world-renowned presenter. His name is Max Stossel and he has done a documentary on, it's called Social Awakening, and it's all about social media and how it has impacted our youth and how it impacts mental health. Where might we be able to find this event? Um, on March 21st, during 6th hour, the entire freshman class is going to be in the auditorium, and they are going to be um, attending the presentation by Mr. Stossel. And in the evening that night, um, you can attend a separate event with your parents, um, where there's free pizza, popcorn, pop, and they're going to be showing a movie called Light, and it's that is the actual documentary that... Um, that Max Sassel uh, developed. It's a really good movie from what I hear. Is there anything else we might need to know about this event? Um, no, other than we're really excited um, to have this opportunity to bring Max Stossel to us. If you want to Google it, Google Max Stossel, Social Awakening. I think you'll find some things that are really interesting on there. And the ninth grade is going to see it live, but 10th, 11th, and 12th will be um, seeing it um, on um, in a video presentation. Um, he's also going over to Wilson Middle School in the morning um, to do their eighth grade class. So we want everyone to be on the same page and learn all the good, valuable lessons he's willing to share. If you need any more information, you can see Ms. Setka. And if you would like to go, it is March 21st, Tuesday, at the Crystal Gardens Banquet Center. Tonight, there's an opportunity for everyone to attend an event with this guest speaker to learn more about the impact devices are having on our lives. The, ev the event is at Crystal Gardens from 6 to 8 p.m., hosted by the Guidance Center. There are less than 50 yearbooks available still. If you haven't bought your 2023 yearbook yet, they are on sale for $70 through the end of the week at yearbookforever.com. There are only 50 books remaining for sale. Make sure you get yours before time runs out. Student Council is hosting another blood drive here at RHS on Wednesday, April 5th. Make sure to sign up to donate. There are information sheets around the halls and sign-ups will be at lunch later this week. Student parking has been an issue this year at RHS. Jordan talked to Officer Cole to find out about the parking guidelines for students who drive to school. Police department has received numerous complaints during the school year about students parking in improper areas. After the first week of March, the Wyandotte Police and Ordinance Officers will be issuing citations for parking violations on random dates. Citations can reach up to $50 and may also result in a required court appearance. The main issues stem from parking along Maple Street the rear athletic slash staff parking lot, and the front staff parking lot. Parking in other locations, such as the Mancino's and Subway parking lot, is also not permitted. Prohibited locations are clearly marked with signs. Students can easily avoid a citation by parking in the designated student parking lot. There are plenty of spaces available. Parking pass applications can be picked up in the desk in the front lobby. The cost for the remainder of the school year is only $15 much less than a cost of a ticket. Recently, there have been some students not remembering where it is appropriate to park. Please follow the rules so you don't get a ticket. March is Music in Our Schools Month, and it's festival time for our groups. Today, the RHS Jazz Ensemble will be performing in the DMG Jazz Festival at Gibraltar Carlson High School. The RHS Concert Choir and Acapella Choir participated in the DCA Choir Festival. Each choir member represented our school very well. Congratulations to the concert choir and a cappella choir who received a very high Division I excellent rating. Seniors, 
Prom tickets for the Fire and Ice prom dance will be on sale right after spring break. Guest passes will be available on Wednesday, April 5th until Monday, May 1st in the front office or LMC. Tickets will be sold on Friday, April 14th for $70 until Friday, May 5th in Ms. Doyle's office in the counseling office. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please contact Ms. Curdy in the LMC. Reminder that Gamers Club meets today after school at 3 p.m. All are welcome. That's all for today. Have a great day, RHS, and we'll be taking you guys with me on a closer look on the impacts of the train car derailment in Ohio. Hello, RHS. I'm YTV reporter Jose Inahosa. And did you know that early in the month of February, we had a train car derailment in the eastern side of Ohio? Okay, yeah, that's terrible, you may tell yourself, but aren't there 1,700 train car derailments per year in the U.S. alone? Well, what made this train so special is that it happened to have been carrying a lot of hazardous material. The main example being that of five train cars full of vinyl chloride. Vinyl chloride is a man-made material that is used to make PVC pipes like these ones seen here. And here. They're also right here. Instead of letting the material sink into the ground and dissipate, the authorities thought it would be in their best interest to burn it off. Inhaling vinyl chloride can lead to plenty of neurological problems like headaches and dizziness and can also cause shortness of breath. Vinyl chloride is also commonly associated with liver damage and cancer. And a reported 3,500 fish died near the accident due to the highly toxic chemical. When burned or brought up to heat high enough, vinyl chloride turns into hydrogen chloride. Sounds terrible, but what does that all mean? Well. When hydrogen chloride bonds with water, it turns to hydrochloric acid, which is used to clean concrete and toilets. Personally, I wouldn't want that to rain down on me. Since the fire was put out, the EPA has not detected any unsafe levels to be concerned with. However, some residents in the area have been reporting headaches, dizziness, and rashes. So to conclude all of this, I went around and asked Ms. Weller on her professional opinion on what she thinks events like this do to our environment as a whole. Okay. The residents may not know what the effects are right now. Um, we call those short-term effects. It may be years and years before we actually know the larger impact that this toxic spill has on people in particular. Um, and that doesn't include the environment and all of the ecosystems that surround the area. I was reading an article that said that they are taking the soil from the spill in Ohio and bringing it here in Michigan to one of our landfills in Belleville which is pretty close to my house um, so you know I, I wonder how deep they're putting it in the ground and does this contaminate our ground and our water um, you know when you talk about explosions in the air you know and all the chemicals that are burned how far did they travel you know do they turn in and react with other chemicals in the air and and does that rain down on the earth and affect other life farther out so these questions are not just driving your car to and from from school and asking about the pollution a car creates. These are on a grander scale that I don't think we know the answers right now, um, how bad the toxic spill was um, until we start seeing the people who were exposed directly and their medical records in the future. Having events like this happen so close to home is truly scary. Whether you learned a little bit about acid rain, hydrochloric acid, or maybe even some of the neurological conditions that can stem off of it, I'm glad we all learned a little bit and could take something out of this video. I'm YTV reporter Jose Nahosa, and let's get back to the anchors.